Good morning, Nigel again. Friday the 13th, it's always good to bring some unlucky news to people, isn't it? This is a polar equation and trying to understand how you can take a magnet, an aerial, and get power from it. To understand it, you have to need to understand what's going on at the atomic level. We all know a chap called Mr. Einstein who said this, but this resides in a positive area. So you must have a positive, a negative, and the reflective of the same. That creates a thing called Chem. See it? C E M. C E M. It only works in them quadrants. It doesn't work any other way, just on these two lines. That allows for the four subpolar equations, you call them north, south, east, and west, and the merge point between the two. That allows us to create what's known as a cone of convergence. See the yellow line? Yeah, it creates a diamond shape in the middle. The cone is a convergence, the compression points with only two points in space, cylindrical, on all axes. This here is the estimated radiated power, or to look at it another way, it would be the minimum self subduction zone of any two atomic particles in space. That produces the two polar fields that we all work from today. Looks a bit like a hamburger. The fluffy bits at the top and all the juicy bits sit in the middle. So when we put a magnet, three polar magnet, don't say they don't exist. So I've got one here, three polar magnet. We've got this configured as south, north, and south with compression in the middle. If you want to know how big the equation is that makes this go and if you take any point on E equals MC squared it produces a triangle and the orthogonal view of itself. It can be here, here, here or here. Where it's quite complex how it plots all the positions of the infinite power sources. If you wanted to look at the cones of convergence, the yellow lines here, we can always apply this. Now this applies to one angle. Now I've got another 359 in that plane and 360 in that. So it's that times 359 to the power of 360. To draw that. If you wanted to look at the estimated radiated power or the inversion or the minimum self in screening range, that's this one here. Again, it's 360 times 360. It's a huge equation. But at the end of the day, without all the numbers, this is what happens. You get a negative ion flow from the antenna to the polar field. You see, it comes down here and here, compressed in the middle, releasing energy at the bottom. If we make a belt here to click off the polar field and then we take another one through the three gaps in the middle to take off another polar field, we can pull off all the power we want from now to the end of time. And to simplify the view, the air is full of ions. You suck them in through one magnetic field, you invert them and you put them out through the same magnetic field. And it works on the same equation, C, E, M, C, E, M, C, E, M. It doesn't matter where we put this cloud, it will always produce power at the exact opposite point. And if you tap off the power in the middle, you get infinite power from now until the end of time. Thank you very much.